Welcome to Give It A Nudge Show. This week we have two guests, which is always exciting, we don't often have two. We have Lee and James from Cure Creative, who I'm very excited. Oh, what is it? Cure Collective. Cure Collective. <laughs> Start that again. <laughs> Cut that, Mike. As I said it, I was like, it's not collective, it's not collective. Um, Cure Creative. Collective. 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 <laughs> if you say it the next time, we'll just laugh. It'll correct you. And it can uh-huh. stay. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Give It A Nudge Show. Today we have two guests on the show, which is always exciting. We have both James and Lee, co-founders of Cure Collective, and they're gonna give us a talk about, and really tell us through their story on how this agency has grown so quickly in such a short period of time, and, and why they think that is. So, welcome to the show, guys. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having now, I'm gonna kind of address you when I ask a question so you don't talk over each other, so we don't have the awkward moment where you both go, or one person just <laughs> dominates the other one. Um, but Lee, I've met you before, so I'm going to start with you. James this is the first time we've met. But Lee, why don't you just give us a quick description on what the company is? Mm, so Cure Collective is an end-to-end marketing agency. So we do everything from brand and web right through to the ongoing growth marketing for our clients. Mm-hmm. And we manage customer experience as well. Cool. And so you've been going four years, right? Okay, cool. And you are both there at the beginning? We were. Okay, so why, we'll stay with you. What's your what's your role in the business then, James? Don't worry, I won't forget you. We'll come to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I lead the marketing division. Yep. So I usually would be taking a brief from a client, working with them around their objectives, understanding their customers, and then working through each of the steps that they need to follow to achieve the outcome. So if they're seeking a growth outcome, we'll work on that. If they're seeking a brand awareness outcome, we'll work on that. If it's changing the customer experience, they're the types of things that we work on. So I lead that area. Okay, and James? I head up the creative side of the business. So everything will come in, like work will come in from, um, <laughs> I've done this for so long. Um, <laughs> from um, Lee and the marketing side of the business or whatever, it'll come in and then we'll have a look at what it is and it'll either sit in the project team with me or um, head into some other various parts. So the ideas, basically. Parts of so the business, yeah. They come to you with an outcome and you come up with the, the crazy ideas. They say crazy, but they're not supposed to be crazy. I'm that's assuming. it. And then push it out to the appropriate team who will make it look and sound Excellent. and all of that wonderful. Beautiful. So how did you two meet? <laughs> So you've you obviously, that you know, one? you started, I mean, I'm assuming you're not brother and sister. Um, so if you're not brother and sister, no, we're not, no. we've got co-founders. Co-founder relationships are a special relationship, right? It's not, I've, I've had some co-founders, we won't talk about that, that haven't perhaps worked out quite as well as I'd hoped they would. Um, and it's, you know, being in the space we're in, we see a lot of co-founders, sometimes two, three, sometimes four. Four's a tricky one. But how do you, you know, I'm always intrigued by how people end up starting a business together. So. You know, where, James, why don't you tell me, where, where did you two guys meet? Was it previously working or how did it sort of come about? It was seven or eight years ago now. Okay. And um, I've been doing creative stuff for almost 30 years. And I was running my, my own business then, Cure Creative back then. And um, yeah, and Lee came, came onto the scene and... With a bang? Right, with a, with a bang. Well, I, feel like you were gonna, I, just, I felt like you were going to say that. But not in, in an appropriate way. Yeah. Well, anyway, carry on. Yeah, and um, look, business for me was growing then. I, I was doing a lot of B2B and yep. um, Lee got just at a, a crossroad or a point in her career where um, she was having having a break, and I said, hey, why don't you just come along to a couple of these client meetings, I could use someone <laughs> with marketing expertise, yep. and so she did, and then, like, we worked really well together, so I decided to, yeah, Make head, it down, head down that path, <laughs> I stole her from where, wherever it might have been that she was going to head, <laughs> and, and, so, and Cure Collective happened. And Cure Collective, and so where had you been before? So I've had 25 years in marketing in yep. various roles. So I've had roles that have been within smaller organisations, some entrepreneurial startups. I had worked on agency side and then I had done some large corporate roles. So directly before working in Cure Collective, I was working for a large global insurance company mm-hmm. and was heading up a health division specialising in mental health and wellbeing. Yep. 
and looking after that from idea right through to conception in terms of rolling out something that at the time was extremely innovative and really um, and really new to market. We talk about mental health now and it feels, like, now. Yes, it feels like it's been around forever, but at the time it was very stigmatised. So it would have been, what, 10 years ago, right, we're talking? Yeah, yeah it would it have been. It wasn't something that was ever It wasn't, about. and it was actually a groundbreaking piece of work to be on. It was really, really exciting, and so I got to lead that yep. piece of work through, and ultimately some of that work has led to some client relationships that we have now. I'm sure, I'm yeah. sure. And so I guess you're in between jobs. Mm -hmm. James says... Come along to a couple of meetings, you're like, I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> so you go along to a couple of meetings. Um, obviously, I can see there's some chemistry. I can see your very different personalities. I can see how that would work really well in front of clients. Um, how do you, and this is, a, this is a question I don't think I've ever asked on this show before, so it's an interesting one because usually um, businesses, co-founders start together. So how does it feel and how did you feel when James said, why don't you join me and create Cure Collective? How does that, how does that feel? Because that must be... A pretty amazing, it's, I'm, I'm asking because it actually happened to me as well. Mm. So I'm, interest, I'm just interested to know how, how that felt. Well, if it's not obvious to everyone already, we're partners in life as well as in work. <laughs> and so I think when you're going to jump into a business with your, with your partner in life, yep. there's a lot of bigger considerations. Huge amount. Can you work together? Is work going to be all that you talk about? Is it going to consume your life? Um, what if the business goes in different directions that aren't good for your relationship? All good for the business so there's a lot of considerations and I think it was it kind of happened so organically yeah okay because I was taking this break that James let me have for one day was it one day <laughs> literally Maybe two. what did you do that day <laughs> can you remember no <laughs> nothing no. I hope you did nothing that day <laughs> I don't know and so it kind of happened organically but I think from my perspective, it was really understanding how we would work together yep. and how we would balance that. And then also, as you grow, how do you manage that with a team of people Yes. in a way that's professional and healthy and all of those kind of things? And so we were, I think I was thinking a lot about that stuff. But it became really apparent really early on that we work really, really well together. Yep. And I think it is what you said about two different personalities. Um, James is quite introverted. And creative. I think we're both quirky. <laughs> typical but creative. In, in different typical, typical creative. creative. And I think that complements each other. And I think because of that, we produce really, really good work as the sum of the two parts. Yes. Introverted. He did mention he was thrilled to be here on the show this morning when you arrived. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. I can see that. So, okay. So, it's been um, just over four years now together, right, as a, as, a, as a collective? Our anniversary for four years is in two weeks. Oh, yeah. I don't think we could release the show on that day. I don't think we've got enough time. <laughs> or maybe, I don't know. We'll, well, we'll look at that. You have to talk about that later. So you've obviously managed to balance that togetherness and professionalness and the team because you've got like 20, 25 people in your we team do. right now, which is quite a lot. Um, I guess, do you think, is it something you've had to work at or is it just worked? And now I might get different answers this here. Is so like the <laughs> therapy couch now. <laughs> I'm just interested. It works. It works. Yeah, it, it looks like it does. It really works. Yeah, yeah it does. Um, I don't want to speak for you, but we're used to this kind of arrangement no, I, too. <laughs> I think we both balance each other out, like level each other out really well. Yeah. And um, we can work. We can work together on stuff, or we can take stuff away. And yeah, so. Okay. That's just always worked. I don't, there's no other way to say it. All right. Well, let's go back to the business. Yeah. So, I guess you, in my view, and I'm not going to put it in my words because I will not articulate it as well as you, <laughs> have some points of difference, I feel. Um, and I think that's probably been testament to your success so quickly and, and obviously why we're working with you now. Um, what would you say, Lee, I'll go to you on this. What do you think is your biggest point of difference? To, let's, let's say we have a lot of different people watching this show. Let's say I'm a company out there, whether I be a corporate or an SMB or even a startup that maybe is looking to engage someone. What's, what's different about you guys? When I started marketing, I started in direct. Yep. And at the time, direct marketing was not the sexy area of marketing. It's where for every dollar that went out in marketing, you had to get a return. And at the time, the appealing part of marketing or the kind of the fun side was actually branding yep. and FMCG and doing all the really big campaigns. But little did we know at that time that the internet was going to change the world. And then what we've seen is this shift towards the need to be really, really commercial 
marketers. And I think that's our point of difference. And having had so long working in that space, the ability to invest in media, comms, brand intelligently, that will produce a growth outcome and measure and test and learn, helps us prevent clients from wasting spend. Yeah. It helps them from getting better outcomes, helps them to achieve their growth, and everything that we do is structured around getting to those outcomes. Doesn't mean that we don't have creative flexibility and we don't have fun. That needs to be brought into the equation and that's part of the magic and the art that needs to happen. But we've got that balance of the art and science. I mean, direct your I mean, I, I that that need to have a return has become I mean it's not it's not an option now, it's it's, no. it's, it's a need, right? And I guess if you think about direct marketing, probably when you started, we we're talking about leaflets through doors, right, and things like that. There's a lot more you can do with the internet because of the, the abilities that you can do from the fun and creative side that makes direct marketing almost like campaign marketing mm -hmm. of the old days, right? Forget the old Pepsi ads, but it's much right. more interesting to do things on. It's Pepsi online. ads with a QR code. Pe pe Pepsi <laughs> ads with a QR code uh -huh. and, and a measurable outcome, uh -huh. right? Yeah. It's the same because I like those Pepsi ads. But um, I never liked Pepsi though. <laughs> okay, so. Um, it's grown quite rapidly. Do you have a client base that you particularly go for? You typically has that, and has that changed since you've come together as a more complete agency? I think so. So our clients have grown with us in some cases. So yep. we've had clients from day one. In fact, the client that James was joking about that I met on day one is still with us today, um, which is fantastic. So I think we started off probably with some smaller clients. Mm -hmm. I think during COVID, we accepted work and just hustled. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Everyone had to do, and so um, we were taking work that um, was kind of, I guess, difficult to manage at the time. And as we've evolved now, I think we're working on some bigger types of campaigns, but we typically work with founders of businesses yep. or um, organisations that need to fully outsource their marketing division so that they can give us the empowerment and the freedom to be able to control but also be on the line for the outcome. Yeah, okay. Good. Tell me about the culture. And I'm asking this because I've worked with lots of different agencies over the years. I used mm -hmm. to do, I used to have an agency that just did digital agency recruitment, God, God forbid. Um, and there's a big difference between smaller agencies that are very personalised, almost family-like, to the massive agencies that are campaigning, the turnover of staff's crazy, or they just hire people on contract all the time. You're kind of sitting in the middle of that in terms of your growth, and you're sort of heading towards that, that larger group. But you seem to have quite a different culture to all of those. So I'm, I'm interested to see, I'm going to ask both of you this. James, we'll start with you, actually, because mm. you haven't said anything for a little while. And <laughs> I know you're dying to. So tell me how you see uh -huh. the culture. And I guess it's probably more specific to your team. But I, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see, how would you describe the culture? Um, it's, it's interesting in the last few years have changed it as well with being online and offline and, and all over the place. Um, yep. The way communication is, um, I've got, we've got a bit of everything. I've, I've got um, people that I've worked with in these little fields that I've found around the world that have done stuff with me for 15 and 20 years yep. now. And then we've got an amazing team in-house and they're all so diverse. There's the brand new, you know, greens that yep. are like 18 and 20 and... Ready to go. Completely different. Come in, woo, every yeah. Friday morning. Particularly Friday. Or oh, do they come in on Friday? That's good. Yeah. I don't think anyone came in on Friday yeah. anymore. Right. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, and then up to the mature. More sedate. <laughs> right. I like uh, like that. us. I don't know. <laughs> and have I think, you seen... Have I you think some of us are just as crazy or Have you seen that about. and struggled with that as you grow? Because it's when you get past, if I say probably about 10 people, you then start to get little subcultures that appear, right? So that can be quite difficult to manage as well. And you having quite different styles of people, as in creative people, niche people, sales people, accounts people, growth... You know, there's a lot of different personalities in there. So you're going to naturally get mini, mini subcultures. Yeah. Um, how have you dealt with that? And who out of you two is probably the more of the custodian of that culture? Probably you are. Yeah, I think so. So we, when we started Cure Collective, we made a decision for how the business was going to be because yep. we obviously had the option to go and James could have kept freelancing and I could have gone back into a corporate role. Yep. And so what we decided that we wanted to build 
was work we love, so picking projects and work that's stimulating and creative and exciting, with people we love, so having a great team, and then for clients we love where there's that mutual respect and you can really shine together. Yeah. And I think in building that, you create an environment that attracts like-minded people to that who genuinely believe in what you're trying to achieve and then who have a really beautiful environment to work in. And so then they produce absolutely amazing work because they've got that creative freedom. They have the ability to test, fail, learn, experiment, voice their opinion, come up with ideas. And so we, we kind of consciously made that decision and then we have attracted the most beautiful, caring team who are so aligned to the vision of the work and what we do that, as James said, they do come in and they're really excited to see each other. We laugh. We came back it. in January and everyone was like, ah! And we were like, who comes back from holidays this exciting? Like, this is great. Um, so they, you know, there is that feeling. And then I think with the subcultures, you have to let that happen organically because... Yeah, Friendships at work are really important. And I think that I've worked in some places where I've had friendships that now have stood the test of time. And work's a great place to facilitate that. And if you've got friendships and they're healthy friendships, then it builds another great element to working together. It does, and it's interesting you say that. And I say this because, and I'm gonna to touch on the, the working from home thing briefly, but we've seen a real push for people to come back into the office. And you guys do th like minimum three days up to five days, right? Which is pretty much the standard. Everyone's going yeah. minimum three days up to five yeah. days now. I've been back five days in. I'm loving being back five Are days you? in. I ha and I have been, gosh, since the beginning of the year. I really don't want to go back to working from home. I'm done, done with yeah. it. But the interesting thing is the push has been coming from the younger generation. So I think the younger generation have gone, you know what? I'm really sick of this cafe in Bondi now. After two years, I've been sitting here looking at the ocean. It's actually not that much fun. But that's not really the driver. The driver has been what you just talked about they are realizing their friend group hasn't expanded. They're still friends with the same people at school who are doing the same things and they're doing the same things, they're going to the same places and nothing's really changing and they're not growing, they're not learning, they're not learning by osmosis by sitting next to people like you guys who are highly experienced and they're not meeting and experiencing new people that are making them go out and meet other new and experienced people and that's how your friendship grows and that's how your, look at most people's adult friends, there's only a few usually from school and the rest have come from work and I think they've finally tweaked onto this. So it's interesting that you say that. Okay, so where, where is the future? You know, what is the future for you guys? Mm -hmm. Well, if, you, if you're looking, and I'm not gonna say where do you wanna be in five years like a recruiter would, but um, <laughs> if, if you look at the business, you've obviously got a direction that you're going. I know you've got quite a lot more corporate clients now than you had before. I know you're looking at some electric vehicle clients. I know you're looking at that sort of environmental space. Mm -hmm. But what's the, what's, if, I, if you were to describe is where you're taking Collective, if someone says, what are you trying to do with it now? What's your, what's your next sort of projects other than just more work? What it, how would you describe that? Lee, I'll let you, because I think you described this to me the other day really well when we had did a coffee. I? Yeah, you I did. I don't know if I can repeat it. Well, I, I, I can't remember it word for word, so don't worry. <laughs> we have a pretty clear strategy of what we're looking to achieve over the next few years. You can't plan for five years because there's always a pandemic. No, right? never but, plan for five years. But we, um, we do have long-term plans in place for what we want to achieve. And so we have a number of clients, as you mentioned, that are in kind of the sustainability space. So we do work in energy, electric vehicles and that side of things. And we think there's some really um, great work that we can do in that space. Yep. So we're looking to expand in that area. Mm -hmm. We want to continue to build what we call our bread, of, bread and butter lines of branding and web. We love doing that kind of work. Yep. We love bringing a new brand to life or refreshing an old brand. Um, that's creatively challenging, fits into our philosophy. And then we have Cure Ventures, and these are our own ventures. Yep. And we use those either to experiment so that we can test and learn in a safe environment. So then if we stumble across a really great initiative in marketing, we can implement that with clients. Yep. Um, but also it helps us balance the work so that we can have a team available for when client work comes in and then we can, if there's client work is kind of slower for that month, we can then work on our own projects and we have a number of those. The biggest one that we're working on at the moment is a kids meditation app called Surfing on a Cloud, which is to help kids I mean, sleep. Yeah, yeah. Cool. and it started when I worked in mental health and wellbeing and I was a foster parent working with trauma, kids facing trauma. And so sleep was a difficult time for them. Mm -hmm. So I launched a meditation app during that time. Um, it was a non-commercial venture because it needed to be non-competing at the time. And it yep. has 
you know, managed to do very well without any investment or advertising behind it. So we're like, let's make Perfect that happen. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got those types of projects and there are other ones that are happening as well so that we can help juggle. And what that also means is, unlike other agencies where there's a ton of pressure on the team in those ebbs and flows, mm -hmm. we're able to even that out a little more to try and create the balance that we want to achieve for everyone. Yeah, it's a bit like smoothing out your bills. It is. Exactly the same thing, I like it. We're used to that with energy too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one question each for you both, La. It's the same question. Um, you're going to grow. In fact, you're growing, growing at quite a rate. Um, people will watch this. How would you describe, in your views, if I was a potential employee and I said to you, and James, we're going to start with you because I think I already know Lee's answer, but why would I want to come and work with you guys? If I said that to you in an interview, what would you say? <laughs> Oh. So I guess I'll be a creative in this, in this instance, because <laughs> you, you wouldn't be interviewing me otherwise. You can't ask creatives this question. Well, you can. You just do it. What are they going to say? That's <laughs> because, hopefully, it'll be quite creative. <laughs> no pressure. It's look. To sum it up in a few words, it's never going to be boring. That's a great like, answer. It's a place that, you know, I don't know. It's creative, so there's going to be something <laughs> different every day. Yep. Like, yeah. <laughs> James is laughing because he's thinking about the hand grenades that I saw. <laughs> right, right, right. Like, um, yeah. That's a good, that's a good I couldn't, I couldn't level out the experience that you would have because it would be different. You can level all, out the work all the time, the experience. every day. But a great, a great place to work, and you'll learn lots. Fantastic. That's if a you good, don't, that's a good yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Come on, Lee. What have you got? I agree with you. Yeah. You can't I, just say that. That's I a cop do. out. No, well, you, no two days are ever the same. Yeah. The work's really exciting. It's, I think it's the right level of challenge. And I do agree, you get to work across, being a smaller business, you get to work at all different levels. You could be working on something that is quite senior. You could be working on something that's kind of, that you would roll out every week. And it's got that repetitive nature, which some people really love. Or you've got, you know, these big creative projects coming your way and you get to work with a really diverse team. Perfect. Well, look, thank you both for coming on, particularly James, because I know you were so excited to come on. <laughs> thank you both for coming on. Um, we're, we're really enjoying working with you, and we can hope to continue that. And I'm in, excited to watch. And maybe I should come and spend a day there, too, just to see what it's like. Um, I'm excited to see what happens with the business. And we, we're going to be doing this thing where we decided, because we're coming up to 100 shows now, I think every sort of 18 months we're going to get people back. You don't have to come next time, James, but you can if you wish. Happy to. Um, just to see where, the, where you've gone and what you're doing and kind of do a little recap. So we'll definitely have you back on mm -hmm. for that in a little bit of time. But thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next week.